In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to do partial fraction decomposition. This is going to be a basic example. In the, first, in the next video, I'll show you how to do one that has repeating factors on the bottom of an equation. Let's start off with a little bit of prior knowledge, okay? A little bit of middle school math. If I told you to add the fractions 1 half and 4 fifths, the first thing you would do is you would find a common denominator. And in this case, 2 and 5, the common denominator would be 10, right? So I would need to get this into tenths. And you would do that by saying, I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by 5. That gives me 5 tenths. Likewise, over here, you would say 5. I would need to multiply both top and bottom by 2. And that would give me 8 tenths. And so then you could tell me then that 1 half plus 4 fifths is equal to 13 tenths. Well, we're going to do the same thing here with partial fraction decomposition at, at one point in time, okay? So keep that in mind. Really what we're wanting to do when we do partial fraction decomposition is we're going to take this fraction here, this rational function. I have a power of x over a power of x, x to, over to the first over x to the second power. And I want to rewrite this. Step one is I always need to factor the denominator. So, x squared plus 4x plus 3, I can rewrite then as x plus 3, x plus 1. That's my first step. Now what we're going to do is you're going to take, and I have a chunk here, and a chunk here of stuff. I'm going to tr take, because I have two terms on the bottom, I'm going to break this up into two separate fractions that have been added together. The first fraction is going to be a over x plus 3. The second is going to be b over x plus 1. Now, I don't know what a and b stand for. Those are placeholders. And the whole idea of the, of the math, math, math problem from here on out is to figure out what a and b are. Now, if you just started right here, and I said, I need you to add those two fractions together. We go back to this 1 half and 4 fifths problem. You say, well, I need a common denominator first. And so what you would need to do then, you notice this doesn't have the x plus 1. This doesn't have the x plus 3, right? So just like here, in this problem, where you multiplied this 1 by the 5, and you multiplied this 4 by the 2 to come up with 5 and 8, well, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say, you know what, I'm going to take this a, I'm going to multiply it by x plus 1. So I'm going to have a times x plus 1 plus b, and I'm going to multiply by the other denominator, that's x plus 3. And those now are both going to be over x plus 3 times x plus 1. So I have a combined fraction. Remember, the whole point, once again, we're trying to solve for a and b right now. But remember, this is equal to 3x plus 1 over x plus 3x plus 1. Well, notice if I'm dividing both sides by x plus 3 times x plus 1, they basically cancel each other out, which means that the numerators must be equal to each other. Now, we can get we're a little bit closer to solving for a and b. Next step, if I know 3x plus 1 is equal to all this junk over here, my next step is to distribute the a and distribute the b, okay? So I'm going to take this a, I'm going to multiply it through, I'm going to take the b, and I'm going to multiply it out, distributed property twice, and I see that 3x plus 1 must be equal to ax plus a plus bx plus 3b. Now my next step is this. I need to group the terms with the x. I'm going to take these two things here. I'm going to group them together. I'm just going to rewrite the equation on the right. So this is ax plus bx. And then I'm going to take these two other terms and write them off on the end. So all I've done is a little bit of rearranging. Remember, this all adds up to 3x plus 1. So here's the deal. Notice that these are the only two things the only two things that have an x in them on the right side. So, if I wanted to, I could rewrite this as a plus b times x. I could factor out the x. Plus a plus 3b has to equal 3x plus 1. Now stay with me. What that means 
if these two terms add up to 3x, because they're the only things with x's in them, that means that this a plus b here must add up to 3. a plus b must add up to 3. Likewise, the things without the x, if I see that I have an a and a 3b here and I add them together, they must add up to 1. a plus 3b must equal 1. Now look what I have, a system of two equations with two unknowns. I can solve for that. I look, I look at this and I think the easiest way, I'm probably going to be either like multiply, I can flip every sign of the top one, right? If I multiply everything in the top by negative 1, that gives me negative a minus b is equal to negative 3. I'm going to rewrite this one as a plus 3b is equal to 1. And now I can use elimination to solve for b. That goes away. 3b minus b is 2b, and that is equal to negative 2. So b must be negative 1. Whoop, running out of space there. b must be negative 1. Now I can go and I can plug in to this original equation. If a plus b is equal to 3 and b is negative 1, that means a minus 1 is equal to 3. So a must equal 4. So I found a and I found b. Time to go plug those into my original equation. In the end, what it means is that we can write, we can write this entire fraction, 3x plus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 3, we can write it as 4 over x plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 1. And that is our answer.